A Syracuse Sports Center starts now. All right, what a win for the Syracuse Orange. They get the win over Michigan State, as improbable as it was. I, I'm still not quite sure how it happened, but join us here on our ESPN Syracuse Facebook page and, and try and break it down with us. Comments welcome, as always, here uh, as we try and talk a little bit about this Syracuse win. The Syracuse Orange are going to the Sweet 16. As improbable as that may, that may sound, as amazing as that would have been to believe, Two and a half weeks ago, after they lost to Boston College, it is true, it is accurate, Syracuse is headed to the Sweet 16 after a win over Michigan State. And look, I think we have to start here, first and foremost. The most impressive thing this team has done, and the reason why they are winning games, is because of this defense, right? This team is winning games right now because of their defense. And it is not a question. I mean, you look at this team and they hold Arizona State nearly 30 points under their season average. You hold Texas uh, TCU 30 points under their season average. You hold Michigan State nearly 30 points under their season average. And you are going to win some games. Now, is it difficult to watch at times? Yes. And that's how we got the first half. It is absolutely difficult to watch because we got the first half and we sat through that rock fight and we sat through these teams that just could not do anything offensively. Yet now we sit here and we get to enjoy the benefits and and reap the rewards, so to speak, of this Syracuse team going to the Sweet 16. And we get to enjoy this team continuing to play now i'm as shocked as anybody else and as i sat there watching that game i kept thinking something was gonna swing one way or the other i kept thinking something was gonna happen tyus battle made me make a couple of shots maybe i thought miles bridges would finally hit a couple of shots i don't know what it was but it never came, right? It never got there. It never got outside of maybe seven points on either side, which is remarkable when you look at how this game was played. I kept thinking Michigan State would finally start hitting some of these open three-pointers that they had and some of these good looks that they got at the basket, and that never came. And what you're left with is a Syracuse team that is so good defensively, so good defensively, that even when their second leading scorer and their starting point guard fouls out, and even when they can't score the ball worth their weight, they're able to win. And it's this remarkable thing that we've seen now over the last week and a half. Really, two weeks, three weeks, if you want to go back to the Clemson game. Because the Clemson game was this kind of rock fight as well. But really, over this last week, we've seen this team play in such an incredible way, in such a surprising way. And they've managed to pull it off three straight times. I think that's pretty remarkable. I think that's pretty incredible. And now, of course, you're, you're right back into the throes of the ACC. And you're going to have Duke next weekend. And we'll get to that. There's plenty of time for that. But I look at these three games, and this one specifically, because Michigan State, you know, aside from the fact that they're just a high-powered offense, they're a great defensive team. And I thought that even if Syracuse could hold them down, I thought that Michigan State would hold hold Syracuse down. And really, they didn't. Like, really, they didn't, right? Sure, they held them down in, in some way, shape, or form. And, yeah, they only scored 55 points. But their season average is 64, right? It's not like they got held down so far below their season average. It's not like they scored 35, 40 points like they did in the Duke game. 
right? It's not like they were that bad. And so I thought Michigan State might have been able to do that to them. And they weren't. They were never able to get that defense going. They were never able to stop Syracuse, Syracuse enough times in a row. And quite honestly, they weren't able to make shots. And that's where it came up the biggest. Michigan State missed shots. Syracuse at the end made shots, made free throws. Whole bunch of points in the second half came off of free throw shooting. And if you're Syracuse and if you're this offense, you take it any way you can get it. You do not bat an eye at the free throws being your main provider of points. You don't bat an eye. You just do it. You take it and you run. Second half, Ty's battle comes alive. And I think that we saw again, now for the third straight game, where Ty's battle has struggled mightily. Mightily. Only to hit arguably the biggest shot of the game in each one of these three games. Hits a huge three-pointer against Arizona State last week in the first four game. Hits a a bucket, gets a a floater in the lane against TCU on Friday night. And then hits the the floater in in the lane again today. So we've now seen three straight games where Ty's battle has played, you know, arguably his his three worst games, four worst games dating back to the UNC game, yet he still has this knack for the big shot. He still has this knack to go out there and get something done when it's needed the most. So, yeah, he didn't play the best that he has this season. We know that. We've seen that over the course of this last week, week and a half, two weeks. But he was there when you needed it. O'Shea Brissett, there when you needed it. He played another very solid game. You know, scrolling up the page, 15 points, 9 rebounds. That'll get the job done. And, you know, if Frank Howard hadn't fouled out, if Frank had played, uh, you know, well, he, he, he was all right. But if he had played better, if he had played what he was, right? If Frank had done what he had done over the course of the year before fouling out, maybe it's a different game. So big picture. Take a step back. This team has now been playing with house money for six days and 23 hours and 40 minutes, right? Ever since it was announced that they were in the tournament. They've been playing with house money. In my mind, in my opinion, this team has been playing with house money. They've won three games. They had to play three games in five days. Their starting point guard went out after he fouled out. Their two centers were in foul trouble from the jump. They had to play a kid who was a walk-on at Thanksgiving. And they just beat one of the three seats. Now, I know that I'm going to come in here tomorrow, and I know I'm going to come in here the rest of the week and say, oh, there's no way they can beat Duke. But why can't they? The the, The way this week has gone, why can't they win? And so when you take a step back and you look at this big picture, and I'm, I'm somebody who doesn't like to go to hyperbole. I don't, I don't like to, to really go crazy as far as hyperbole goes. But there are, two, there, there are three things here that I'm, I'm going to kind of try and, and go to the extreme with. I think this is Jim Beheim's best coaching job on the surface. This team that has seven players, that has... You know, you can make the argument that doesn't belong in the tournament, and plenty of people have made that argument. And they've now won three games in five days, and they've gotten to the the Sweet 16. A team that 18 days ago, Jim Beheim almost thought was done. That was the feeling I got. When he sat there after the game in Boston College, and Syracuse lost by 15 points, and he's saying, hey, we just don't have the horses. Hey, we just don't have the guys right now. We don't have the scorers. To me, that sounded like a coach who who knew his limitations. A coach who understood what his team could and couldn't do. And quite frankly, it sounded like a coach who thought that he wasn't really going anywhere with this year's team. That's the impression I took away from that press conference. So that's one. I think this is up there with, with Jim Boeheim's best coaching jobs, getting this team to the Sweet 16. Two, along these same lines, and again, I'm... I'm not a fan of hyperbole, but I'm going towards this. I think getting this team to the Sweet 16 is more impressive than getting the team two years ago to the Final Four. And that might sound crazy on the surface, 
But, like, I knew that team was good, right? Like, I was, I was fairly certain that team was good. And they had a couple of bad losses, but for the most part, they were with Jim Beheim off the sideline. They went down to Duke, and they got a big win. I knew that team was legitimately good and had a lot of talent. And you got Tyler Roberson playing the right way at the right time, and Tyler Lighting came up big on defense and, and played well. And, okay, all of a sudden you're in the Final Four. This year's team never showed the hint that they were going to do this. This year's team never showed that they had, I'm not sure talent's the right word, but I'm going to go with it. This team's never showed that they had the talent to make a run like this. This year's team never showed they had this ability. Yet here we are. Right? Here we are. Watching this team go to Omaha next weekend. So I think this year is more impressive than 16 than two years ago. Personal opinion. And the third one, and this one I really have to look into the record books and really have to dig in on, but I think this might be the, the best three-game stretch that, that a Jim Beheim zone defense has had. When you think of the scenario of only having seven guys, when you think of the do-or-die, win-or-go-home aspect of the NCAA tournament, and when you think about the three teams that they have played and the, high power, the high-powered offenses that they have had to play over the course of these three games, I don't think it's really that much of a stretch to say this is up there with the best three-game stretches that Jim Beheim's 2-3 zone defense has played. So these are things that I'm going to get into over the course of this week. We'll talk about them for sure tomorrow, noon to 2 on Orange Nation. But I wanted to lay them out here. And on that last one, you look at Arizona State, top 15 offense, and they got held nearly 30 points below their season average. TCU, top 20 offense, held nearly 30 points below their season average. Michigan State averaged better than 80 points per game, 81 points per game, held nearly 30 points below their season average. And you're not talking about, you know, any old team. And I know that you can look back through history and say, hey, Jim Beheim ha- has been great with this zone. We know, right? We know the accolades. We know the accomplishments. We know what Syracuse has done over the last 40 years. And we know that he's flustered Tom Crean and he's made coaches look silly and, and dumb and foolish. But have any of them been as accomplished as Tom Izzo and looked so foolish? Like he did today. Right? Tom Izzo's unwillingness to do something different, change something up. It looked like Jim Beheim just caught another coach in his web of this 2 3 zone and confused the living daylights out of him and suffocated them. And next thing you know, Michigan State is trying to shoot over Syracuse and they're putting up three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer, 37 of them. And they couldn't hit water if they fell out of a boat. This defense right now is on another planet, which is amazing because remember the last time we saw them before this tournament run, they let up, I don't even know, I think UNC is still scoring against them in the Barclays Center. Boston College had put up 85 points on them 18 days ago. So we saw bits and pieces of this over the course of the season, right? We knew that Syracuse has had a good defense and they play defense well at times. But it hadn't lately. It hadn't recently. And then a switch flipped. And here we are. Syracuse is going to the Sweet 16. Truly a remarkable performance by the Syracuse Orange to be able to win that game, to be able to pull that game out to be able to outlast Michigan State in what amounts to a road game. I'm surprised, to be totally honest, that Syracuse got the job done. I am shocked that Syracuse is going to the Sweet 16. I didn't think this team was deep enough. And quite honestly, I didn't think this team was good enough. I thought Michigan State was far more talented. But it doesn't matter. There's something about this team, and they play their guts out, and they leave everything on the floor, 
and they go after rebounds, except not today. And they dive for loose balls. And they have Braden Bay or a walk off, a walk on coming off the bench and getting two tie ups and committing fouls at the end of the game. And and really, it's crazy to say this, but a walk on contributed just as much to this win as anybody else did on the floor. They're easy to root for, but they're really hard to watch. And I think that's like the tagline. If you were going to put a tagline on this Syracuse basketball season, if you were going to try and sum it up in one sentence, Syracuse basketball, 2018, really easy to root for, really hard to watch. And I think that we saw that again today. So I just wanted to come on here onto our Facebook Live page, and thanks to those of you who joined us. And uh, try and break it down a little bit here in the uh, immediate aftermath of Syracuse beating Michigan State. Shocking win, upset win, huge win. And SU is headed back to the Sweet 16. We'll be back at noon tomorrow for Orange Nation. Daniel Baldwin at 10 a.m. on ESPN Radio. Syracuse, we will talk to you then.